Skylar, thank you. And as always, I will start by the, our thanks to you guys and the work that you do behind the scenes to enable people to attend and learn from the likes of uh, Tony and Matt that we see in front of us. And I'll, I'll get straight into it. Um, the reason for that is uh, we've got some really high quality, well, we always get good questions, but the, for this particular webinar, we've got some terrific ones. But before we get to those, it's a point of introduction, Tony, uh, we did that week in October 2022, that Carter week. Then there yeah. was a fair bit of action after that, and then things went quiet. What happened? Mm, they went quiet. <laughs> well, I can look back now as we well, were almost two years to the day. Um, yeah, close. And I remember, Oscar, everybody uh, dug in her heels and said, yeah, we're we're excited to learn this kata, but we're not excited to have one more thing to do, right? Um, we're a con continuous improvement training environment, and there's no room on the plate to add another uh, uh, major portion to our meal. So we enjoyed your class. We <laughs> understood most of it. None of us left excited to do <laughs> one more thing. And yeah, that right. was really actually you, you never you actually you didn't actually elicit that. I haven't heard, but no, no, you sense. you you advised us this is not one more thing to do. This is a new way of doing what you're already doing, but in one ear, out the other, Oscar. Sure. And I would say for my 30 colleagues, 28, 29 of us all had that same experience. And so I wanted to be respectful, Oscar, and you spent a week with us. And so I tried doing, I tried doing kata. I tried doing kata on things that were out of my uh, realm of experience. You know, I was like, I was going to hit a home run and make Oscar proud and yeah. you know, using baseball. The first, the first project you chose was, or the first topic was, was big, if big. I remember rightly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I pull this off, Oscar and Mike Rother, they're going to, put me on a page of, of the front cover of the next book kind of stuff. <laughs> and man, I struck out and I was discouraged. And in my mind, Oscar, I proved I don't have time to do kata. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So I, I put it aside. I put it out of my way. You know, I had plenty of other lean stuff to do, training stuff to do. And I, I there was a moment I was relieved I don't have to do kata anymore because I told myself, I gave myself permission, no more understand and that would be a path that a lot of people go down i think people listening who might be in a similar spot would be able to relate but the important thing is something changed late last year you contacted me and it was pretty clear even by your voice that things yeah. were different what happened i didn't give up on you i uh i got an audible account and i li listened to rother's book uh, uh as i was driving to work for over the course of a month and i re-listened to many portions of it and it could have been at a red light or something, but the something in the book resonated me back to our initial conversation with you where kata is not what you do, it's how you do it. And, and the beauty of it was I was getting tasked by the executive management team to start bringing autonomous maintenance into our local factory. And uh, it, it, That's it, what just, triggered it. it was, call it coincidence, the stars lined up. I don't know what it was. But it happened, and I saw the path to autonomous maintenance. And it's probably because my uh, executive uh, manager gave me a really well-written challenge statement, and I knew exactly what it was. And it wasn't hard to tell you where I was, Oscar. I was at ground zero. My current condition was as dismal as dismal could get. So was that a manager in your pillar or was it uh, a site manager? It, it, site it was a, it's a corporate manager. Yeah, it was our CI corporate director. Manager. Okay. Do you remember what that was as a matter of interest? Yeah, we wanted to start uh, in Washington. And I will say whatever happens in Washington probably happens at most of the other church and white sites. Um, we get stuck in uh, running our machinery, running to failure. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then we just take the whoopings and lickings and we do a big major repair, get it back up and running and run it to failure again. And now we want to start doing autonomous maintenance, which specifically the task was, can you design a clean an inspection and lubrication routine that happens at a prescribed frequency? 
And I said, well, I can't, but I could put together a Kaizen. Yeah. And so I knew, that I already knew this was a Kaizen. Then I was like, wait, I got a challenge statement. I already know where my current condition is. I'll take the Kaizen team so they can see current condition. But, and I just delivered this back to this uh, executive manager. I said, hey, we're not going to hit your challenge statement in 2023. But, and I showed him the cotograph, you know, the, the uphill battle. I said, by the end of 2023, I will move <clears throat> the boulder this far up the hill. Yeah, right. And and, and then it just, it, it was so perfect. I didn't need a room full of kata practitioners. All I need is a room full of people that believed we can push this boulder up the hill. And all and I had to how do was, was The how was scientific thinking. Yeah, and that's it. I just had to introduce him to uh, uh, experimenting, as you say, within the uh, the box of risk, right? Yeah, yes, well, yes. we'll learn something, and when we learn something, we're going to advance it. If we don't advance it, at least we know what didn't uh, advance it, and we'll design something. It works so well with autonomous maintenance. I had so, just before you get into the detail of that, hang on. Um, two questions. One is the your executive manager. Did he uh, was was that person aware of scientific thinking? Did they know what you're on about? Or no? How did you how did you explain it to them? Because that's a question we often get. How do we get buy in from executives? So, do you remember what you went through, or what you said, or did to ex to get them on board? I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't even try and convince them. Yeah, I waited right. till I had results. And okay. then he was amazed with the results. And, okay. uh, and then I said, oh, yeah, this was a kata kaizen. And he's like, what is this kata? <laughs> and so I said, it, it's a pattern. It's a routine. It's how we executed to get closer to your vision. Yeah, right. So, but uh, he, he, he had sufficient faith in you to get started, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Was there, right. you know, was there uh, any trick to that leap of faith? No. No, okay, no. It might have been. He was relatively new to the organization. He had he had very little to lose and a lot to gain. Yeah, sure. Okay. The other question I have, I think it's something key that you said about five minutes ago. You said that um, it's not what you do. The Ricardo routines are not about what you're doing. It's developing a how you do it. Mm -hmm. So it took. Would you, if you could turn the clock back? Is there anything that you could do to realize, is there anything you would change to help yourself realize that earlier in on reflection? Um, I don't know. I could, or any advice you could give to other people, how you can get people to realize that earlier. Cause it is, it is key. What you said was key. Yeah. It, Oscar, I, 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 although in the opening statement, I was excited to push it off my plate. I never really, gave up on Kata. No, okay. Um, and then, you know, listening to Rother's book, I realized, uh, although it wasn't a documented storyboard or anything, I myself was in this Kata, right? I failed and I just had to wait to get the tenacity and the stamina to design my next experiment on myself. Yeah, right, okay. And, right, and I think so. sometimes, I think sometimes with books, I've certainly found this, it's the timing of reading them as much as the content. So you can read something and miss it, but then you have some learning and read it again and you get it. And I think that might have been something that clicked in there as well. Yeah, perhaps. for me, I'll, I'll be honest. I read uh, Mike's book before I even met you and it yes. was dry and boring and dull, <laughs> but I kept it. And Unlike after myself, we did our, of course. And then after we had our week, um, a lot of the fundamentals in Mike's book started to make sense to me after our week together. And so that's what I, I mean. It's the timing of reading. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. No, interesting. Um, Cause that happened to me with JI, you know, I read Toyota talent and it just went straight over the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Then I was exposed to TWI through the Institute or JI and I reread Toyota. I thought, all oh, oh, right. Now I see what they're getting at. What's being yeah. got out here. Anyway, let's go back to autonomous maintenance. Tell us the, about that. Um, you got going with these autonomous maintenance Kaizens. What did they actually look like? Can you go into that? Because I know a few people are people are quite interested in that. Yeah, let, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna share my screen as I talk through a high level Kaizen event. Uh, let's see here, we practices. So 
the backstory is, so I had such success in the Washington site, our laundry detergent site in Victorville uh, asked me to come down and do the routine with them. And you can see we've got a three-day event shown here, and there's nothing proprietary about what I'm sharing with the team. But we spent the first half of day one, right? You got to talk about the autonomous maintenance. In our case, it's a clean inspect and lubrication routine. And we, we nobody in this room knows what kata is until at the end of it. But as we go through this, you know, I'm, I put the frog in the water, then I'm turning the heat on per se, so that nobody's resisting any of this. And you, we just, we went to the floor and I said, that's look, that's ask the operations team, what do you guys do now to keep your machine running? And we knew what the answer was, but we had to go see it ourselves. And that's the key to this is you've got to go to the floor and see it. And we saw, you know, a dismal attempt at trying to keep these machines running, these laundry uh, uh, fillers. And then we came back and I said, okay, we know where we are. We know where we want to be. In true kata fashion, I got the group, what's in our way? And they started throwing up, well, you know, they're under-trained. They don't have the tools. Um, they don't have the uh, technical guides. I said, well, what can we do? And it's, it's quick, rapid experiments. What's one thing we can do? And we'll design our first experiment. And we just kept going back and forth to the floor. And when we designed a new experiment, you'll see like in column D, we had coached the team for 30 minutes on the new version of the clean inspect routine. And then they would execute it so that we could watch it. And we just kept doing this PDCA cycle on the floor until at the end of it, uh, we get to the end of the event. This happened to be a three-day event where our current condition is now at our defined target condition. It was a clean spot to stop. Um, and then what I we left the team with is, now that you know what it looks like, just develop it into some kind of standard work. And we've got a standard work template at Church and Dwight where they just lay this routine out in sequential order with time expectations and uh, you know what does good look like. And for the Victorville Laundry Detergent Facility down in California, this has sustained itself just with standard work. So hang on, you mean a route, they, what we see in front of us here, you captured that within a routine. Is that what you mean? No. Yeah. No, no. Here's... Is that what you mean? Yeah, we, we, we captured it all on yes. paper and scratch notes and post-it notes. And then they go back and this is the standard work for the routine that we created for them. Yeah, you know, right. I understand. It's a ronky laundry detergent filler, and it's done a sequential order. You know, it, kind of like in a SMED uh, uh, mindset. What can you do before the machinery is locked out? What can you do while the machines are locked out? And sure. what activities can you do after the machine is locked out? Yes. So yes. truly trying to get as many activities uh, moved out into those external spots to minimize the downtime. And, and I think this routine's got. 45 minutes of prescribed downtime and they've seen uh multiple hours coming off of their downtime tracker now yes give me 45 so, minutes and i'll take three hours away is what their war cry was a couple of things i love about this you might want to comment this is a so what i understand is this is you presented what we see in front of us there as what you were doing but in your, but you knew the way you were going to think through that pattern over the three days was the how which was scientific thinking, a yeah. really, really good case, really good example of doing something that isn't apparently isn't Carter related, but behind the scenes, that's how you were functioning and that's how you were thinking. That's a real, it's a fantastic example of that. Um, now you said you didn't mention Carter at the start. Did you with towards the end? Did you, did you make people aware of the thinking pattern towards the end or how did you, what did you do? I did. And I, I, and I asked the group, uh, you know, had I given you guys more kata training up front, would you guys have been as receptive? And I was expecting the group to say, Tony, I, we're glad you didn't tell us we were doing kata because we would have been more resistant. And it was absolutely the opposite. People really wish they would have gotten some kata exposure up front and then gone into the routine. So... As I went through this again the next time, and I invited you, 
I did. I pre-trained the entire group. You know, we yeah, spent, right. spent two hours talking about PDCA and how it applies to our three-day event. Ah, okay. Okay. And the other thing I really, uh, um, the other thing I really like was you, and I think it demonstrates your development and learning, is you rather than say what what obstacle is preventing us reaching the target condition, which is essentially what's on the pocket card as such, you said what's in our way. So that's a good illustration of your learning. You yeah you develop the routine through the script, and then you take it into your own language. You Tony eyes it. Yeah, and don't don't get me wrong. I don't go far without the script. <laughs> Things on my list. Uh, uh, <laughs> I understand that, but the script. People often say, "Oh, you know, it's it's a method. It's a method. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we follow the script. It's a method. It's not a method, and you don't follow the script forever. The purpose of the script and the routine, the method or the routine, is to develop a way of thinking, and then you adapt that into the, and Tonyize it. And that's the, right. that. What's in our way? That language you use is a brilliant example of that." Yeah, you know, as I was telling you earlier, Pat from the Institute was here with us and we're going through some J.I. stuff. And that was one of his uh, uh, nuggets of advice. You know, don't spend all your time trying to get the J.I. learner to master the important steps and the key points word for word. Remember, the objective is to develop the skill. Right. Yes. Yes. And I think that exactly. that jives with what you're saying. Uh, I begin, I'm, I'm nowhere near kind of proficient but i have begun to develop some of the skill and in absolutely yes yeah. and then you've sort of touched on it but after the first autonomous maintenance kaizen you did in that one in calif you then facilitated that one in california one of the changes you made between the first and the california one was you introduced um the carter routines at the start or made people aware of them at least mm -hmm. Is there any other changes you made, your learnings from the first to the California one? Um, some of the feedback I've gotten back from my uh, events here in Washington and from the California one, and this is kind of where we're at right now in our journey, is the standard work is a good sustainment piece, right? At least you've choreographed what needs to happen, but we still need to circle back around and develop the skills. And so... This is where we're at right now, Oscar. I, I tell you, not just to plug uh, JI, but we've got to bring the JI component back into the rear end of this event. Because there's so still- Explain that further, because that's one of the questions. Um, Robert. Now, how does Carter fit in with TWI concept? So that's a good segue into that. So talk yeah. more about that, please. So as you look at the standard work, you know, it, it, it's choreographed. And if you look at it deep enough, you're really looking at line one as a skill, line two as a skill. And really, we got to ask ourselves, does the population of employees have those skills? And really, do those skills need to be standardized so that we get the same output? And the question, the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so uh, we're now circling back around up here, Washington, and we can't train all the skills. We don't even have the content yet. For all the skills right. required. so we're looking at the ones that are going to give us the biggest bang for our buck in these routines and we're writing job instruction breakdowns and we're going to get those in the hands of our trainers so that we can eliminate those points of variation yes yeah so you yeah. can see you haven't got time to uh, build you can't build rome in a day but you can see the pull coming for those for the the skill of instructing yeah so on that topic, what about the skill of leading? I know you guys are scratching the surface or you might be further now with job relations. So what about that? Can you see that being pulled in or where that might, where um, might that fit? Yeah, there's definitely room for there. job relations. Um, again, on the backside of the event, not everybody's a believer in these autonomous maintenance routines, um, right? It's, <laughs> it's absolutely disrupting people's... Uh, daily interactions or you know especially the veteran employees have been doing this for multiple years all of a sudden yeah, yeah right what you've been doing is not good enough we've got to do it this way so yeah there's definitely a job relations component into this and uh, uh matt and i are still so young at job relations that, yeah no it's fine um, but you can see the pool coming oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. 
Let's get into a couple more of these questions. So Scott Coppel has asked, um, or said he would love to hear about the culture environment, general mindset of the workplace where you are, and he's used the word implementing this practice, and I'll chip him on that on Friday morning, when you're practicing this practice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the culture is still very, on one aspect, Oscar, they're hungry for organized improvement. Yeah, right. On the other hand, uh, <clears throat> nobody likes to have their cheese moved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, I would say the culture is still really young. I mean, we've got a, a three-year vision where Kata's can become the way we do business when it comes to uh, implementing any kind of change or any kind of improvement. Right now, we just got small pockets of uh, practice. Myself, uh, uh, Alex Russo, who some people have already know or met. So it's, so, it's a... So where long... this is, where you've sensed this go well, um, and where you've had more struggles, what's been the difference in culture? What have you noted? What was the what was in place already, culture-wise, that made it made the good ones go well? For want of a better description, um, the participants are a hundred percent volunteer. Right, we don't force anyone to come. Okay, um, you know, we might entice them with a free lunch here or something like that, or. <laughs> cool t-shirt but again at the end of the day everybody's volunteer they want to be there um and then you know i i get excited when i look at the the roster of people who are going to participate and i know they're they're people who have influence on the floor even if it's not a official influence so that is what makes it fun and you know i get excited when people just take and run with it sure yeah so the voluntary, uh, it's the voluntary, that's probably, that's something you'd recommend is yeah. the voluntary nature of it. And, and and we talked about this a few minutes ago uh, at the Washington site, our top site manager, uh, he's not wild, against, wild for Kata, but he's not against Kata. He's just, I want results like a typical yes. manager, right? And as yes. long as Kata is getting, getting the results he wants, we get a uh, uh, creative freedom. But that's a good example of the what and the how, isn't it? He wants results. That's what he wants. How, this is how we're going to get it. He doesn't necessarily need to be, and needs to not get in the way of it for sure, but as long, uh, but he doesn't necessarily need to be the preacher of it if there's people like you and Matt doing the how behind the scenes, if you like. Yeah. Um, Wayne Meyer has asked, but I think mm -hmm. this has been covered, how specifically was Carter applied to autonomous maintenance? the improvement carter and the coaching carter so the improvement carter you can describe did you actually you know did to what extent and this is not a good or bad or a tick or a cross to what extent did you bring the coaching carter into the that three-day autonomous maintenance event events um i did bring it in uh you know we'd come back after doing our floor exercise and, and i would go through the questions you know uh, yes. and i'd work the car you know what happened? What did you expect to happen? Why didn't it happen? Yeah, right. What are you going to do different when we go back out to the floor? So, yeah, we would do the coaching cot a part of it also. Um, okay. It was very loose. You know, we weren't we weren't working storyboards at this per se. No, 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 no. Understand. But it was sitting there behind the scenes as such yeah. Yeah. In, in the we way you conduct it. Critical of what happened on the floor. Yeah, and good. It was uh, guiding people to uh you know just change one thing yes yes and what they were learning along the way yeah. um jose soria has asked a great question he's written tony if you could eliminate one of your ci showstoppers overnight what would it be i love the question <laughs> i could eliminate one of my ci showstoppers overnight what would and other the things that are getting in the way um, I personally, I get excited when I'm out on the floor working with the hourly employees. Um, when I have to circle back around and get my peers, uh, permission, to, you know, permission to go and be disruptive within the box of risk, you know, yes. um, 
we're in vitamins, so we're heavily regulated. So I can't just, you know, uh, go and do something that's wild and crazy and get upside down with the FDA per se. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, right. Yeah, I, li I like creative freedom. And yes. sometimes I don't like it when it's heavily bookmarked by my peers or the management team. Yeah, well, so what I understand you to be saying, and Tony said this a couple of times, it might be worth expanding on it a little bit, Tony, is the box of risk. Do you want to just explain that? Because you've said it well, three or four times. Um, well, in, in all the CI things I do for Washington and my colleagues around the church, um, we change things and uh, nothing is 100% absolute. So you've got to ask yourself, if it should go wrong, how quick can you set it back to previous state? Yes. And what kind of uh, punitive implications will happen if you do go, get upside down, right? Yes. And you got to make sure you understand the risk if things don't go the way you plan, yes. right? In, in our facility, first of all, we're never going to compromise our employees' safety or health or the we won't increase risk to our consumers since uh, we're vitamins and we always tell ourselves moms put our stuff in kids' mouths. Yes, so, fair enough. So that illustrates that box of risk. And it's that, I know we talked about it in the training in that 2022, and I've never been able to find it, but in, there's a clip on somewhere in the in the um, YouTube world or whatever world where Mike Rother actually does this with his hands, you know, that you're experiment, you conduct your experiments within the box of risk. And one of the coach's responsibilities is to keep the learner within that box of risk and keep ourselves within that box of risk. Yeah. Because no, things will go wrong. Well, things will go as you didn't predict. Yes. There's pro possibly an adjustment in language there that there's not right and wrong. Yeah. But things will sometimes go as you didn't predict. Yes. I, I, unpre unpredicted things happen. But that's as long as we're within the box of risk, that's where our greatest learning occurs, which is great. Right. Um, is there anything Brandon Bunn has asked? Have you taken the foundation of Carter and modified it to best work for your company. <clears throat> so is there anything we, you, you know, out of the theory from October 22 that you've taken and you know, modified significantly because it fitted better within Church and Dwight? Was there anything in particular no. there? No, I would say uh, the content, both as you delivered in the training and the way Mike uh, describes it in his book is 95 percent pure to what we're doing here yes okay. there's not there's no heavy modification it, it's once you get past that it's not what i do it's how i'm going to do it once yes. that sinks deep into the darkest corners of your brain i mean i apply kata to ji when i'm designing a ji course you know what is yes. uh, the challenge i want 12 learners to understand a four-step methodology Yes. Well, it's a current condition. They understand none of it. Or maybe they do understand some of it. <clears throat> so then, then I just start putting obstacles. Kata applies to everything. Yes. Now, good finish point. There's a point in one of Mike's books, I think it's the first one, where he says, you know, if you start, once you start thinking this way, you will never stop. And he's right. He's dead right. I read that at the time and thought, I don't really understand what he's saying, but I can relate to that now. And I think, I think you can too, Tony. Yeah. So we're, Pretty much at the bottom of the hour. Appreciate your time. Uh, really yeah, appreciate Oscar? your time and your insights. Yes, Jim. I just wanted to say, because somebody did pose a question in the Q&A chat. Okay, so go. I don't want to do that. Uh, what was it? I can't it was, see. Um, the, the Kaizen Kata overview, is that, uh, Oga asked, is that something you could share a little more about? Uh, not now. I didn't see it in the chat. I'm sorry. But... Um, if I have my way, Jim, uh, Tony and, and maybe a couple of others are going to present um, at CarterCon 25, which is in Noblesville, Indiana. So if I have my way, Tony will be presenting a case mm -hmm. study there. And that's the place to ask that question and pull him aside and get some more detail, yeah, okay. I would suggest. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll definitely have a couple more autonomous routine, uh, maintenance routines under my belt between now and uh, next year. Okay, that'll be great. All right. Uh, really appreciate your time, Tony. And thanks, Matt. And once again, Lynn Frontiers, thank you for all the stuff you do in the background to bring these things to life. Well done. Thank you, Oscar, yeah. Jim, and uh, Skyler.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Look forward to seeing you guys again next year. We'll see you later. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See ya. Bye. Bye.